All right, board game fans, welcome to my second unboxing video where today we will be unboxing Battle Droids, which is the first edition of Battle Tech. However, when this came out in the early 80s, it was named Battle Droids, as you can see here, but one quick phone call from George Lucas, and we got Battle Tech. However, I've never seen one of these in person. I've never held one, touched one, anything like that in my entire life, and I've never seen one come up for sale anywhere. I've only seen pictures of it online or videos of it on the internet, and... So I finally had the chance to own one after I won an auction on eBay just a few days ago, and whether or not I overpaid for it is not necessarily here nor there. The idea here is that it was a 99% complete set. I was told that it was only missing one Soltic, which uh, for the uninitiated would be a Griffin. We're not going to have the lawsuit discussion. Now I'm filming this with one hand, as I don't have anyone here to help me at this time, so bear with me if you will. And uh, let's get right on to it and see what the contents of this box are. Alright, now, here, it looks like we've got parts for mechs. This appears to be a Shadowhawk. I, you know, look at the breastplate there. I'm a fan of the show Fang of the Sun, Dugram, so that appears to be the backpack, the Turbo Zack. Oh, it even says Dugram right on it. How funny is that? <laughs> what have I got here? Soltic. Well, the guy said it was missing, but doesn't look like it is. I mean, here it is. That's all complete and totally unassembled, which I'm still not positive at this point whether or not I'll ever assemble it. I mean, I have metal figurines. A couple of dice. Let's see here. This looks like a uh, bag that you would store a comic book in. And these are the paper counters that were at one stage used to represent the mechs before the plastic figurines came about in Battletech 3rd edition. So for it looks like for this edition and for Battletech 2nd edition, oh we got a fire counter here, they were using paper counters still. This looks interesting. Scorpion tank, I guess. Light woods. So I suppose you would stick that like this on one of these hexes to denote light woods, which was always neat because the map boards on these things wouldn't come designated. And I remember many arguments with my friends saying, well, that, that wood right there should be heavy woods. Because look, it's way greener than those ones. That should be heavy. Yeah, well, it doesn't say that on the board, so you're screwed. Let's see here. Errata sheet. Well, I guess these are some decals here. Yep, for the Shadowhawk, Dugram. Huh. Base to hit five for kicks, how funny is that? Punching, base to hit four. Those are the old rules, remember that? Yep. The critical hit table here has pretty much remained unchanged insofar as I'm aware. Got the map boards here, which appears to be kept in a bag that you would use to hold a magazine or something like that, a poly bag. It's uh, laminated, I mean, you know, not by the person who owned it, but it's shiny. The water doesn't have designation on it as to what level it is. Some of the mountaintops do. Rough terrain. This is the Battletech map that most players are familiar with. It represents, you know, your average planet on a bright sunny day. Except it says Battle Droids. 
And the back does not have a hex grid printed on it, which is funny, because uh, most of the map boards that came after this did. So those are the map boards there. I assume that the other one is identical. Piece of cardstock here that has nothing on it. And now it appears as though we've gotten to the rule book. Let's see here. Basic battle droids. Game setup. Like any rule book, it has, you know, some basic rules in it about how to play. And then I assume at some stage, you know, you'll get to advanced battle droids. There we go, like playing the game as you're used to it. However, that is not a record sheet that I am anywhere near familiar with seeing. <laughs> no, not at all. I was told by, by somebody to check out the record sheets because I suppose they would be different. I hope that there are actual record sheets here. Yep. Oh my god. This is a sample, but... Ha! <laughs> What the hell is with this? <laughs> oh, I'm not making fun of them. It's just, it's, it's new to me, man. Expert battle droids. Oh, man. Archer, the Shadowhawk, the Stinger, Warhammer, there's a griffin there. The old battle mech location tables and oh the old missile hit table. I've never seen that. Here we go. Here we go. Oh man, these are blank records. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing, man. I can't, I can't get over that. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, so I suppose this is what you'd make a copy of if you wanted to build your own. I suppose it comes with the rules. Unlike the new sets, which don't. You have to buy a separate book for that. More blanks, it appears. More. A lot of blanks. I suppose the reason why the uh, examples that we've gone past in the book here have what looks to be handwritten names on them is you would have to, I, this is me just guessing at this point, you'd have to make a photocopy of this stuff and then you'd have to look at the tables here and read you know, for example, how much armor and whatnot else and where these things go on on each mech, and you would just have to write them out by hand. They did not come with pre-generated record sheets like uh, the third edition did. Third edition came with its own, you know, already made record sheets, and you didn't have to do any actual work. But I suppose with these, you just have to copy the blank record sheet and fill in the information yourself. Which is interesting. What do we got here? Crits and whatnot. Now, if I could be wrong because I haven't gone over this yet. Damaging a droid warrior. <laughs> I'm so used to it being called mech warrior. Okay. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, if I recall how this worked way, way back, even in, in so far as 3rd edition goes, if you had, no, it would be second edition. If you had a gunnery skill of four, it meant you didn't, you added nothing to the, to the roll insofar as gunnery skill. And short range was four, medium range was six, and long was eight. See what I mean? Nobody has written on this now. This is just a, an example. 
And uh, so if you, let's say, for example, were at short range, you'd add plus four. Your gunnery skill is four, so you do nothing to modify the roll. If you ran, you add two, you're up to six. Your opponent, let's say, moved six hexes, you're at eight. No intervening terrain. There you go. There's your shot. You know, four represented the average skill level, which I think is still that way. In the, the new rule books, they call a four gunner the average pilot. But I mean... Four gunners can't hit anything. Unless you're right up on it. Optional rules for clearing woods, fires, clubs. Auto cannon. It's interesting to notice the auto cannon there. It does five points of damage, which you can see right there. There was no auto cannon 10, 20, anything like that. It was just just the auto cannon. That's it. Did five points of damage. Oh, here we go. The uh, battle droid design, p being able to craft your own mech. I love how they had the uh, engine table with the names and such there. That was present in the old second edition books. Yeah, and then this is how I suppose that they would expect you to fill out an armor diagram if you were making your own mech. Machine gun flame. That looks like a Merlin. With that, that weapon's loadout. Oh. Like an old Marvel comic book. Flip it over. I suppose this is the assembly guide with how to put together things. Android warfare. Ooh, a scenario. Skirmish on Mesa 7. Here. See if I can read it. While on a scouting mission to the recently rediscovered planet of Mesa 7, two lances of the House Davian discover the presence of wolf's dragoons. Scouting reports show that the dragoons have been on Mesa 7 for some time. Davian objective, eliminate dragoon presence on Mesa 7 and secure the planet for the House of Davian. Dragoon objective, eliminate all enemy forces to keep Mesa 7 base Seek Ert. <laughs> Mercenaries. Oh, oh, here's a little history. Battle Droid. Regimental Organization. Ridjack Ryan. Oh, yeah, I read about all this stuff in the old second edition book. Droid Warrior Families. Yeah, I can see how George Lucas didn't want any... any of his words on this. Dark Age. The Succession Wars. Got a Marauder there. So a little history, some rules. Stuff like that. Here we go. Hi there! If you enjoy putting together the model kits in this game, you should know that 20th Century Imports supplied them. We import a great variety of science fiction kits from Japan. For instance, oh, it's a locust. But I don't know what it's called in, you know, Japan. It's on the other side. Nothing. Then... Appears as though we have a catalog from 1985. Right. Fast Corp catalog, Star Trek. I suppose in the back here is an order form if that's what I wanted to do. Yep, order form. So I suppose you'd look through the catalog and write on here what you wanted. Now, I was told that this was missing the Soltic, but I guess it isn't. Hmm. A lot of Star Trek stuff in that catalog. Well, that appears to be it. So... It's about as complete as you could possibly and conceivably ask for. Uh, I was under the impression that it was 99% complete, missing the Soltic. However, at this point in time, 
Having searched through the entire box, I think I can go ahead and safely conclude that this particular copy of Battle Droids is 100% complete. Unless when he said it's missing a Soltic, he meant it's missing one of the paper counters, at which point, I mean, that could be completely and totally possible. But, I mean, really, if it was missing one of those, what's the harm? I'm sure you could find that somewhere. Well, sci-fi board game fans, thank you for joining me on this trip back to the early 80s as we unboxed Battle Droids, the very first edition of Battletech. Thank you so much once again for joining me. I am Tuck Davian, known around the world as the guy in the bow tie, and I am the voice of Oklahoma independent professional wrestling across the Sooner State and Oklahoma's premier Doctor Who cosplayer. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash real TFD and on Twitter under the same username. Search Tux Costumes on Instagram for convention reports, celebrity interactions, cosplay photos, and more. Thank you so much once again for joining me, and I bid you a fond farewell. From the Sooner State, we'll see you out on the Space Lanes. <laughs>